What's up everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. Today we are finally doing a tarantula feeding video. It has been months since I've done any type of arachnid related content and I'm thrilled to finally be putting something out there for you guys to enjoy. But before we get into today's feeding video, I want to take a quick moment to thank today's video sponsor, Tarantula Cribs. Tarantula cribs prize themselves in producing enclosures where clarity meets quality. These enclosures are stunning and they're super elegant, lightweight and easy to access and really provide your tarantulas with the right amount of humidity as well as ventilation. Really awesome. Now, although this company is based in the continental United States, that's not to say that you can't purchase these products and have them shipped to you if you live somewhere else in the world. That's right, Tarantula Cribs actually offers international shipping. Now, depending where you live, this could be a bit more costly, but that's not to say that you couldn't do some sort of group shipment with your friends and capitalize on splitting shipping. And that really does make a huge difference in making the shipping aspect very affordable for bringing these awesome enclosures into your your home to house your beloved tarantulas in. Something to consider. I'm really excited because they've actually sent me a large box that I've yet to open and we're going to see what they sent me. Obviously I assume it's some enclosures so we'll set those up part way through the video too. Let's get right into it. Now one of the things you'll hopefully notice right away is that I try to plant most of my adult tarantula enclosures and they also have a pretty solid bioactive cleanup crew. There are loads of springtails in most of my tarantula bins and I think this provides the animals with a more enriching healthy environment especially with the plants. Naturally let's not forget that I made a video about this once and you can check out the link up above if you want to learn more about planting your tarantula enclosures and the benefits associated with that. Alright let's see if the spider would like a super worm. Oh, dang it. I wanted her to come out for that a bit better. Here we go. See if she'll take a second one. But hopefully we can actually get her to... Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! Wow. This girl is so awesome. Okay. Well, I think we can move on. Next up is my Seriopagopus lividus female. This is the cobalt blue tarantula. And this girl is gorgeous. I also really love what you did with her enclosure. It just looks so cool. Let's go ahead and feed this girl something nice to eat. For those of you that are wondering, that's just silica sand. I used it to kind of add more drainage and um, help it become a bit more shapeable i guess the substrate if that makes sense just give her a little bit something more to work with all right girl here we go whoa nice awesome takedown beautiful job yeah this is one of my favorite spiders for sure Really, really like this girl. Actually got her in Vancouver too, so it kind of makes it special. One of the spiders I took home with me before I came back. All right, well, we've had a nice look at this lovely tarantula. I think it, uh, we're probably good to continue now, aren't we? Next up is a beautiful spider. I tend to be a little bit afraid of because you look at her funny and she kicks hairs. This is Cayenne, and she is my Brachypelma Bomi. Let's see if this beautiful but nervous spider would like to eat also a super worm. Cayenne? Oh yeah. Nice job, girl. She sure got that. Awesome. And again, you can see that the enclosure has hide spots, 
and is nicely planted with a pothos cutting which helps maintain some relative level of humidity. The next tarantula we are going to feed is Sally. She is my Guyanese skeleton tarantula. Usually has a very nice feeding response. Let's see if that's the case today. And I believe she recently just molted too, so. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh man, this girl is so awesome. Beautiful spider. Okay. <laughs> you do you, but I think she needs another one. Oh, nice. Woo. Okay, well, Sally never disappoints. Thank you, girl. That was quite the show you put on for us. Next up, we have Strawberry Shortcake, who is my non dew tri -peppy. This is the Brazilian Blonde, or Strawberry Blonde bird-eating tarantula. She also just molted. I've picked off most of the bits, but there's still a few random pieces of her exuvium in there. Let's go ahead and offer her a super worm. Oh yeah, this girl loves eating, as you can imagine. But let me just say, those non dews ooh, she really got that one good. Those non dews have some pretty intense urticating hairs. You do not want to set these spiders off. They get pretty flighty and sketched out. Let's give her maybe one more. Perfect. And friends, like I said, that'll do her good for about two weeks. I don't like to overfeed my spiders, as most of you should know by now. That's how I want their abdomens looking. I don't want them to be two times the size of their carapace. It's not really best. Sure, the exception would be slings. I like to kind of feed them until they outgrow a more fragile state. But for the adults, they're getting fed about once every two weeks. It also depends on how warm you keep them because that kind of activates their metabolism and makes it go faster too. But I just gauge it by the size of their abdomens and always make sure they have fresh water at all times. Okay, so next we have my female Brachypelma Classy, Mexican pink tarantula. There we go. Man, this is probably one of my favorite species in the genus. I love Brachypelma classy. They're just gorgeous, gorgeous spiders. And this girl is beautiful. So happy to have her. My little tarantula family. Da -na -na -na. Da -da 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 -na -na. We are in unicorn's enclosure i don't know what she did with her burrow there but this girl as you all know is pretty defensive most of the time unicorn oh here we go oh yeah there we go she got it very nice very nice Ooh, juicy. Ooh, that superworm is really getting messed up. All right, let's move on. Next up, we have everyone's favorite Canthus Graeginiculata. This is Dorothy. And Dorothy recently molted. I removed most of it. You can see the carapace is still there from the exuvium. But look how beautiful this spider is. She needs a rehouse ASAP because she grew tremendously in size after her last molt. But let's, for now, give Dorothy something nice to eat. I hope you guys like her enclosure. It's kind of a nice setup. 
Uh, she did have the opportunity to burrow and hide under here, but she just decided to dig it up and web it up. So kind of goes without saying, Acanthus carias love to be bold in the open. They're a great display spider. Alas, let's feed Dorothy. Oh, wow. Great takedown, girl. Would you like a second one? I think you would. I'm sure you would. Oh, that's, that's your paw, though, so I know you're probably going to chew that up later, but... Dig up that super worm. It's going to get away. It's going to get away. Come to the substrate. Here. I'll help you. You got it. Ooh, geez, that's juicy. That is definitely juicy. Oh, man, I love this species. So underrated, too. I mean, look at that face. They're gorgeous spiders. Absolutely stunning. Oh, my goodness. That's the La Vista Superworms. All right. Well, let's move on. Okay, everybody, we are unboxing the big box that was sent to me by Tarantula Cribs. Thank you again so much for these incredible enclosures. Check it out, everybody. They sent me a terrestrial style enclosure and an arboreal style enclosure. Look at the incredible amount of thought process that went through producing the ventilation, cross ventilation and the elegant designs you see here and I really love the lid design they slide out really easily and then they have a magnetic component so it locks in place really flashy and I can't wait to set these up and display two of my tarantulas in them the arboreal design is very similar as you can see it slides and then it locks in place again really really awesome Let's go ahead now and set these up. We're going to put a base layer of substrate here as you can see and I'm going to create a sheltered kind of wood area. You can see a bunch of dwarf white isopods running around in there too. And as always, like I said, I like to use plants whenever possible. So we're going to add a pothos cutting because these things are pretty much bulletproof. As long as they're kept moist and have some light, they usually do quite well. Now I'm just going to take some water and gently spray down and clean the sides of the enclosure before adding a little bit of leaf litter to kind of accent and create more dynamic environments for the animal. We're going to fill up a nice little water dish and then we're going to coax the animal into the new enclosure. I'm going to be rehousing my Hysterocrates gigas female into this enclosure. She's still a juvenile, lots of groin to do. Yes, she has that defensive temperament, which is why I'm using the bamboo tongs. We're going to, as carefully as possible, coax her into the enclosure. And thankfully, for some reason, she decided to just do that. So that made it really easy for me to safely move her into the enclosure and not risk any uh, flight response or anything like that. But she's a beautiful spider. I love those giant baboons. Now for the arboreal style enclosure. We're sort of going to be doing the same thing. We'll get our substrate in there. I have a lot of cork bark and uh, vertically oriented wood I'd like to place in and a really nice tall cutting of pothos that I'm going to prop up against that wood. For this enclosure, I'd like to house my Carabina Versicolor Juvenile Female into it. She's going to be getting a nice upgrade in this enclosure. And these are a very beautiful arboreal species that I honestly think everyone should have the incredible coloration in these animals throughout their life stages and as adults is just so impressive. Thank you again and if you guys want to order tarantula cribs enclosures the link is in the video description. Well I wanted to feed Odyssey my grandma stole a pulchra but as you can see friends she molted and wow is she looking incredible. Look at her velvety panther coat. That is a fresh skeleton if I might say so myself that's a beautiful exoskeleton so we're just gonna leave her we don't want to disturb her she has a fresh water dish set up there that she can drink from and stay hydrated after that process 
And I'll probably give her another week or two because larger tarantulas, for the most part, take extra time to harden their exoskeleton. So she doesn't need to be eating anything anytime soon. But wow, such a beautiful tarantula. I don't even remember the last time she molted. It was quite some time ago. Awesome. Next is my female Zenithus immanis. Wow, you just had to do that to your water, didn't you, girl? Come on. You know tarantulas, and if you don't, you do now. She lives in here. I'm gonna see if I can coax her out with a paintbrush so you can get a better look at her because these spiders exhibit some very unique and rather beautiful coloration. Oh yeah, there we go. Check out that pink. Now this is actually one of the most expensive tarantulas in my collection. I believe I paid $250 Canadian for her as a sex two inch sling. I wanted to really make sure I had a female. But yeah, she's super cool. Oh man, this is great. I never get to see her like this on footage. Oh, isn't she gorgeous? Look at this girl. She's gonna come now. She should. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Very awesome. Beautiful, beautiful girl. All right, well, let's move on. Next, we are going to feed Afro. She is my titlo cattle. Albopelosis, the Honduran curly hair tarantula. And for those of you that don't know, this is a very special spider for me because I actually produced her. Uh, during a strange time in my life, I had to rehome all my tarantulas. This was many years ago, but I had produced a sack of T. albopelosis. And this was one spider that I kept with me despite rehoming all my tarantulas so i've actually had her it's been about a decade now actually 10 years and it's so special to have one of the tarantulas that you produced yourself in your collection i'm very fond of this girl she's a very sweet tarantula so let's show her some love and give her something to eat now i'm not going to give her too much because as you can see her abdomen is quite large she doesn't need much of a meal but yeah this is her enclosure this is her burrow down there, and uh, she also has some nice pothos cuttings in, growing in her enclosure. She's a happy girl. Get it out, bro. It's getting away. I think it got away. Ah, fro. Oh, there it is. You can see it crawling away in the distance. Well, I guess... I don't know what to say. She can have that still. I'm gonna give her a tiny little mealworm beetle instead. Cause I know she's gonna find that super worm. So we'll give her this. Tiny little thing. <laughs> and then she can find that super worm beetle later. Okay, next is my female Posolitheria ornata. She is hiding in here. Let's see if she would like a super worm. Look how beautiful she is. She is gorgeous. I love my pokies. I gotta tell you, they're such stunning animals. All right, let's see if we can give her one more. There we go. Look at those markings, eh? It's so beautiful. Oh, she's not taking it. Oh no, yeah, there we go, she's taking it. I was like, what? Next up, we are going to try feeding my female heart bacteria poker peas. See if she wants to come out and eat. 
Very pretty spider. Well, that worm is definitely tangled up, but also looks like she's not interested in eating. Huh, try once more, see what she does. Looks like that's a no, but I can think of a similar looking spider that might be very interested. Okay, everybody, this is my female Monocentropus balfouri was clearly saying, get out of here, I'm not interested, I'm gonna close my entrance. But I think if we offer her the feeder, she might be more interested in eating. Hopefully. Hopefully more interested in the H poker peas. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh no, I might have spooked her. She's trying to get a more exciting shot with the animal coming out. This might work though. Yep, here we go. Ooh, nice. All right. Ooh! Dang, girl, you're going nuts. Okay, well. Clearly she was happy to eat that. Guess we can move on. Now that the tarantulas are settled into their zen habitats, you can see that my H. gigas dug out a nice burrow and put dirt in her water dish, which then soaked into the substrate. Not surprised. Anyhow, let's try feeding them. I'd like to try and coax her out first. Okay, okay. Yep. Here we go. Beautiful. Now, let's give her a super worm before she runs off again. It's a nice little one there. There you go, girl. Enjoy. It's a happy spider. She loves her tarantula cribs enclosure. Next, we have my Carabina Versicolor female. Let's see if she would like to eat as well. I find that arboreal tarantulas just take a lot longer to sort of settle in and start webbing, but I'm sure if we try and feed her, she'll be interested. Mm, maybe not. Oh, there we go. I spoke too soon. Perfect. Look at that beautiful coloration. Everybody needs a Carabina Versicolor, let me tell you. They're just absolutely beautiful spiders. Isn't that right, girl? All those different hues. So, so pretty. All right. Okay, everyone. The last spider I'm going to feed for today's video is Aragog. And she is my adult female Theraphosa sturmi, which is the burgundy goliath bird-eating tarantula. This animal, although sexually mature at this size, it's not even full grown. I'm going to do something stupid and try to coax her out a little bit. That way you guys can see her better. But then that happens. Oh, <laughs> intense girl. Okay, well, I just dropped a super worm for her. I feel bad for, I guess, spooking her by accident. Don't want her to feel stressed. Oh, look at those huge, huge fangs. An impressive animal. Okay, now that we've sort of activated a feeding response, I'm going to try again to kind of lure her out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got her out. Now we just need the worm. Okay, it worked. My perseverance paid off. Aragog, look at you, you're huge. As you can see, one of her pedipulps there is kind of weird. I think it retained when she molted. I'm really hoping that when she molts next time, she's not just gonna lose a pulp. 
but we'll have to see what happens. But yep, that's my beautiful girl Aragog. As you can see too, I try not to let my Therafosa abdomens get way too large. I just find that this species is quite prone to molting issues and them just having too much to eat and being fed like tons because they'll just take it. I don't think that's very healthy for them. So I honestly feed my burgundy goliaths every like three weeks, give them a few supers, maybe some crickets for stimulation, and they do quite fine just like that. We'll give her one more here. And then that should be good for quite some time. Oh yeah. Ooh. She got them. Oh yeah. Oh geez, that's awful. Please pick that up. You can do it. I believe in you. Grab it. Nope, you didn't get it. <laughs> Try again. There you go. Blech. Yep, that's uh, that's one epic spider. I wish I could kind of show you guys how big she is exactly. I guess you can kind of see my hand in comparison. She's a big girl. A very big girl. Well, everybody, that was awesome. That was very awesome. And let me say, I have a lot more spiders I'd love to show you, you know, like I keep all my slings over there. I have to do an update on my jumping spiders. And there are tons of other enclosures here that we didn't even look into. Let me know if you'd like maybe like a full blown tarantula collection tour or something like that, where I can just show you the whole collection in its entirety. I just worry sometimes that, you know, even this type of video, it's like 10 minutes long. But we can definitely do like some crazy one hour long tarantula feeding video if if people are serious about it and are going to watch. Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video. As always, I want to take a moment to thank our video sponsor again. Thank you so much to Tarantula Cribs for sponsoring today's video. Really appreciate the two awesome enclosures and I really appreciate you supporting the channel. And lastly, for today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all what your favorite species of tarantula is and why. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give a comment a heart. We can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks so much, everybody, and see you all soon for our next video. Take care.